الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي لا تراه العيون ولا يصفه الواصفون ولا تخالطه الذنون ولا يخشى الدوائر يعلم عدد قطر الأمطار وعدد ورق الأشجار وعدد ما أظلم عليه الليل وما أشرق عليه النهار ولا تواري منه سماء سماء ولا أرض أرضا اللهم أنت حق من عبد وحق من ذكر وأنصر من ابتغي وأرأف من ملك وأجود من أعطى وأوسع من سئل أنت الفرد لا ند لك وأنت الله لا شريك لك كل شيء هالك إلا وجهك لن تطاع إلا بإذنك ولن تعصى إلا بعلمك تطاع فتشكر وتعصى فتغفر القلوب لك مفضية والسر عندك علانية الحلال ما أحللت والحرام ما حرمت والدين ما شرعت والأمر ما قضيت العبد عبدك والخلق خلقك والأمر أمرك فأنت الله الرؤوف الرحيم أما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى في كتابه العزيز فدعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الدين عند الله الإسلام وقال جل وعلا في مقام آخر قل بفضل الله وبرحمته فبذلك فليفرحوا هو خير مما يجمعون وقال تعالى في مقام آخر ألا إن كلمة الله هي العليا وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يا أبا سفيان جئتكم بكرامة الدنيا وخير الآخرة أسلم تسلم أو كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم My dear brothers, sisters, elders and youngsters It is from the nature of a human being that regardless of our age, our backgrounds, our ethnicities that every individual desires to be happy Every individual looks for relief. They look for peace. They look for a sense of comfort. And this is a natural drive and innate feature of every single human being. The pursuit of happiness is something as real within us as the existence of our lives. However, the question that we ask ourselves is not whether or not we choose or desire to be happy. The question that we ask ourselves is what truly makes us happy? What is the process that we will engage within that will bring our heart peace and happiness? Because if we unravel all of the coverings between us and our Habib Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the man, the individual, the epitome of a human being who lived in this world, when we look at him, we don't necessarily see a happy man staring back at us. We don't see a person who lived a life of complete joy and comfort. But rather, it would be quite the opposite. How could someone be happy if they lost six of their seven children in their own lifespan? Where they had to bury their own children? How could they be happy if they were born without a father and lose their mother at the age of five? How could they truly be happy when their last child that was born to them in Medina to Munawwara and Ibrahim is breathing his last in his arms and as he's holding him, the Prophet is tearing. And the Sahabas around him looking at him are surprised and perplexed and somewhat confused that the Prophet is crying and they say to him, Ya Rasulullah, wa anta kadhalik, that you also cry? Don't you know this is from Allah? And he responds by saying, Hadihi rahmatun min Allah. This is mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Ibrahim is leaving this world, he is saying, Al ayn wa tadma, wal qalb yahzan. العين تدمع والقلب يحزن ولا نقول إلا بما يرضى به ربنا. The eye does tear and the heart does yearn. The eyes do cry. بب وبيضت عيناه من الحزن فهو كظيم. And Yaqub عليه السلام when he cried his eyes out to the point that he went blind and missing his son Yusuf. والقلب يحزن and the heart does yearn and it grieves. But the tongue will not utter an utterance that brings the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّمَا أَشْكُوا بَثِّي وَحُزْنِي إِلَى اللَّهِ We will only speak and complain to the one who can listen to us without judging us. The one who can listen to us and we can be vulnerable in front of. When Hamza leaves his world in Uhud and he becomes shaheed, the Prophet ﷺ would walk around town saying, who is there to remember Hamza? There are people remembering their shuhada of Ansar. Who is there to remember Hamza? When the Prophet leaves this world, 
the darkest day the world has ever seen. Where Anas ibn Malik radiyallahu anhu says, لَمَّا دَخَلَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ الْمَدِينَةَ أَضَاءَ مِنْهَا كُلَّ شَيْءٍ When the Prophet entered into Madinah al-Munawwara, it lit up the entire city. It became known as Munawwara. It was not Munawwara, my dear friends and brothers and sisters, because of the lights that were in the city. It was not Munawwara because of the beautiful chandeliers. It was not Munawwara because of the beautiful furniture and the landscape and the architecture of their homes and their communities, but rather the opposite was said to be true, where this was a city where it was known that someone that would live there for too long would get sick. Hence it was known as Yathrib. The landscape didn't change. The furniture did not change. The architecture of the city did not change. What made it Munawwara, what brought relief, what brought happiness to this community had nothing to do with anything exterior. What made it Munawwara was the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, entering their homes. What brings happiness to our home is not simply the home being a home with furniture and people living there. Why is it so that I see bodies but I don't see humans? I hear chatter, but I don't hear, I am not able to hear humans. Why is it so that there are homes and houses, but they're a void of peace and sakina? Why is it so, Hassan al Basri rahimahullah says, why is it so that there are families, but they're lacking love, they're lacking compassion? And at the end of this discussion, he says, that it's very simple. Is where do we rank the value and importance of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam being present in our home? وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَأَنْتَ فِيهِمْ Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we will never punish a nation. We will never punish a group of people. We will never punish a family. وَأَنْتَ فِيهِمْ وَقَالَ الْقُرْطَبِ وَأَنْتَ فِيهِمْ أَيْ أَسْسُنَّةُ حَيَاتٌ فِي حَيَاتِهِمْ وَسُنَّةُ حَيٌّ فِي بُيُوتِهِمْ وَسُنَّةُ حَاضِرٌ فِي أَوْلَادِهِمْ That their sunnah is present in every layer of their life. Their sunnah is present within their homes. And he finishes by saying, When the Prophet left this world, the entire world was dark. We don't see happy people looking back at us when the Prophet left this world. We don't see people smiling and enjoying life per se in the way that we see it. But we see people who were content, who were at ease with the decisions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We see people who were content, not because they were happy, but because they recognized that their source of happiness was something bigger than anything that could be present in this temporal world of ours. Their source of relief and their source of happiness was nothing that could be found in this world. Of course, we're allowed to be happy with what we have, but their source was asking themselves, is Allah happy with us? Their source was asking that if I pass away today, will the Prophet meet me with a smile on his face? When Bilal was leaving this world and the people around him see Bilal as he is a leader. Stand, O oh Master, and give the Adan and give us peace in our heart. Bilal was the same individual whose voice was synonymous to the presence of our Habib being alive in Madinatul Munawwara. In the moment our Prophet left this world, Bilal said to Abu Bakr anhu, that I can't live here anymore. Because the alleys and the streets that I would walk within used to have the presence of our Habib, and today they are void of his presence. I can't live here. Let me leave. This same Bilal, who was a leader, the master of the believers, as he's leaving, we can imagine the sorrow and the grief that will be, that will strike the ummah. His wife starts to say, Wa huzana, wa huzana. What a sad day it is. And he, as he's in and out of his consciousness, looks at her and says, La taquli hakada wa la kin quli wa taraba wa faraha wa faraha ghadan nalqa Muhammadan wa hizba. Don't say that, rather say, what a blessed day it is. What a happy day it is. What a beautiful day it is. Because tomorrow I will meet the Prophet again. And I will meet the companions again. Similarly, dear brothers and sisters and friends, 
Our source of happiness and our source of peace comes from Allah being happy with us. And all of our decisions now have a consistent point of reference in life. And now as I'm moving forward in life as a student, as a father, as a mother, as a professional, and as I'm asking all these questions that lead to my happiness, does this question even exist in my portfolio? That will my children be raised with Iman? Does this question even exist within my portfolio? And will my daughters and sons and my families live with Iman and be proud of their Iman? Because this was their question. And this was their source and avenue of securing happiness. And anything that we value in this world to the extent we build homes, they're attached with insurance. We buy cars, they have insurance. Why do we have insurance for? The idea of insurance is if anything ever goes wrong, I will be able to reciprocate whatever the losses are and then gain whatever I lost. Nowadays, we even have insurances on our phones. Anything which is valuable carries an insurance plan. What is the most valuable asset that we have? that allows us to sleep at night knowing that if we leave this world, we are at ease because we left with Iman. The most valuable asset that we have is the kalima of La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. This becomes the source of our happiness. This becomes the source of relief for us. That we know when all of this will end, there will be a new beginning. And when we go to those places, it won't be going to a place of strangers. Rather, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ when a person who lives in this world as a believer and he or she has a consistent source of motivation which is Allah and His Rasul that whenever they make decisions a question that they always ask is where does Allah belong in this decision of mine? Where is the sunnah of the Prophet in this decision of mine? If this brings displeasure to Allah and His Prophet, is it really worth me doing? And if this brings displeasure to everyone else, but it brings honor to Allah and His Prophet, is it worth doing? He says, Ya Rab, that if you are happy and my relationship with you is sweet, let life be bitter. وَلَيْتَكَ تَرْضَى وَالْأَنَامُ غِضَابُ If you are happy and the people around me are not happy, I will survive that pain because the goal is the source of my happiness is you. The source of my children being successful is not the amount of wealth they earn in the degrees that they have. The source of my children making me happy in this world is them being raised in a manner that brings Allah happiness. And in the akhirah, when they stand, Allah will say, where are the parents of these children? Where are the parents of these children? Why will Allah be asking for such parents? Because the only way in the akhirah that someone can ascend a rank, and someone, someone can ascend their ranks in Jannah, the only way an individual will be able to move above in Jannah is through the effort and the acceptance of their children. Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَاتَّبَعَتْهُمْ ذُرِّيَّتُهُمْ بِإِيمَانٍ أَلْحَقْنَا بِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ وَمَا أَلَتْنَاهُمْ مِنْ عَمَلِهِمْ شَيْءٍ That when the children will be above in the higher ranks in Jannah, and the parents will say, where are my children? And the children will say, where are our parents? The normal routine would be to bring the children down. But in the akhirah, there's no one that comes down. There's no one that descends. Allah will say to the angels, let the parents also ascend and reach a higher level in Jannah. As children, we understand the smile and the honor that our parents receive when we, su when we succeed in a task in this world. Imagine the type of honor our parents will receive when we become a means of their Jannah becoming bigger in the Akhirah. There is no Sadaqah Jariyah which is greater than this. 
And this all comes back down to what is our source of happiness? What is our source of relief? What brings us peace? And for the Sahabas, though they lost much, they gained everything. Because they gained Muhammad. Also. If we look in the history of time, you will not find a nation that was deprived of goodness, that was plagued with ill and vices, more so than the community before the coming of the Prophet there, it was Such was the norm in their time that they would disrespect parents and elders. Such was the norm that they would bury daughters alive. Such was the norm that they would take from the orphans and the, those that had less. It was the norm of their time that to an extent that the people in the Romans and the Persians said, we don't want to rule these people. They're not worth our time. They're not worth the headache. But something changed. Something happened that these same people became the rulers of the world. They were not worth ruling, but now they became the rulers. The only thing that we can see that changed within them is a point of reference is a source of motivation that was bigger than life itself. And that was the Prophet Sallallahu in the Rida of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُوا Where Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, Tell them, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is the only verse in the entire Qur'an where Allah orders us to be happy. There are verses where Allah speaks to us about being content. أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنَّ الْقُلُوبِ but this is the only verse in the Quran where Allah actually tells us to be happy. He says, O oh Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tell them that the source of happiness is Fadlullah. And Ibn Abbas says, Fadlullah al Islam. Wa bi rahmatihi, in the mercy of Allah. Ibn Abbas says, Wa bi rahmatihi refers to Quran. The Kitabullah, fihi khabru man kana qablakum, wa nabu man kana ba'dakum, wa hukmu ma baynakum. هو الفصل ليس بالهزل هو الذي لا يشبعه من العلماء ولا تزيغ به الأهواء ولم ينتهي الجن إذا سمعته أن قالوا إنا سمعنا قرآنا عجبا يهدي إلى الرشد فآمنا به هو حبل الله المتين وهو ذكر الحكيم وهو الصراط المستقيم من قال به صدقا ومن عمل به أجرا ومن دعا إليه هدي إلى صراط مستقيم that the source became the Qur'an. The source became the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. So when we leave this gathering today, and we return to our families and our homes, and we have everything around us, and there is, there's family, there's wealth, there's happiness, we mustn't ask ourselves on a daily basis, is Allah being remembered in this home? Is Allah's dhikr being taking place in this home? Or is the mention of the Prophet's name taking place in my life? Because Imam Ghazali ibn Qayyim rahimullah, echoes the same sentiments and he says that, a, that, that an individual where the entire day goes by and he or she does not remember Allah and say the name of the Prophet they are like dead people. They are like people who have no life. Where they say people who remember Allah are like those who are alive and those that have nothing in regards to the remembrance of Allah and His Habib they are like those who have already died. Our source and our avenue of happiness is something that is bigger than this world. So when we lose out on mundane things in this life, when we lose family and loved ones, when we lose out on a job or when we lose out on an opportunity, indeed it brings us pain. But we realize that true ease and true comfort is in pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is the source of everlasting peace. That is the source of everlasting contentment. And that will be the source of everlasting happiness as it will be said to us when we enter into the realm of the Akhirah. نحن أولياءكم في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة ولكم فيها ما تشتهي أنفسكم ولكم فيها ما تدعون نزلا من غفور الرحيم وأخذ عوان الحمد لله رب العالمين.